Hi, I'm Tim, welcome to The Restoration Couple. Today is a long-awaited video that we get numerous requests for, but now is time to go through our top 10 DIY tools for renovations. So this is a pretty hard one to call. Um, it is something that we get asked quite a lot in comments and in the emails. What sort of tools do you recommend if you're starting a home renovation? And I've come at this from the point of view that you probably already have a set of hand tools, um, just kind of things like screwdrivers, hammers, saws. So these are the sort of things you either might not think about or that I would definitely suggest you have to have. And this will be open for debate. And of course, this is just from one DIY to another DIY. But if you are a professional, if you've got any other opinions, put them below and I'm sure we can help people out. So we're going to kick things off with um, perhaps a not very exciting one, but very important, which is just all your safety stuff, your PPE, and whether that's uh, eye protection, ear protection and all that jazz, you've got to look after yourself. And especially if you're working in old homes, there's no point taking risks, whether it's kind of lead paint and asbestos risks and things like that. So there's a bit of a false economy in buying the throwaway dust masks. They're never as good and you probably will get through dozens uh, of them during the work you're doing. So just get one with replaceable filters. It will seal much, much better to your face and kind of also won't steam up your goggles so much. So that's what we've got for, uh, for our safety gear. Also, just remember, um, I, I couldn't find my boots, so I've got Joe's, but it's decent, sturdy foot, footwear, especially if you're doing any structural work, something with uh, safety toe caps and just sensible work gear. Knee pads that slot into trousers are quite handy as well. Just basically look after yourself. Right, on to some more exciting stuff. So next we're on to kind of the bread and butter of DIY, which is things like the combi drill. So a drill driver. And nowadays they are super powerful in comparison to what uh, used to be around. So cordless will pretty much get most of the work done. Um, and if you've got one with a hammer action on it, especially if you've got masonry and stone and brickwork around, that's gonna help you out. But just something decent, a couple of batteries, you know, three, four amp hours, something that's gonna last and you're not chasing around uh, for power all the time. That will get you through most of the jobs. You can look at things like impact drivers, but I've got through most of this renovation without one. And only until the last few weeks have I started using one. I see the plus points to that, but you can definitely survive without one. So that is our number two. And next up is another power tool, the circular saw. Uh, it's a pretty staple tool, I guess. You can probably manage with a hand saw, but this will speed things up a huge amount. And you can do most things with this that, you know, you, people might think you need a table saw, but for general DIY and general house renovations, something like this will really get you 99% of the way. Whether it's using like a little jig to cut down sheet materials or just kind of um, cutting down floorboards and things like that, it's going to be a time saver but also just helps you out with any straight cuts. And this one's cordless, again it uses the same batteries, don't worry too much about what brand you go with for the power tools. Really at a DIY level, providing it's reliable, it's got a decent warranty and you know, and it looks well built and it's got good reviews, then go for it and just try and keep on the same battery system. It's gonna really help you out uh, because it, yeah, otherwise you've just got so many charging stations, it becomes a bit of a pain. So that's the cordless. So I do have a, um, a corded Makita, but there's actually very little amount of times that I need that now. I use it if it's, you know, particularly hardwood or a really thick door or cutting through some oak sleepers in the garden, but a cordless one is perfect. Right, moving on. Okay, next up is not a particularly common tool. This is one that we get asked about lots. We gave it away in our 10,000 subscriber competition, and it has just been the best tool for numerous things really, but whether it's lifting all the floorboards in the house, we use this, just gives you so much more of a mechanical advantage. Pretty strong, inexpensive, and if you're working on your own, or you just need a bit of extra muscle power, this, you know, whether it's prying brickwork or, or concrete uh, walls down, 
lifting floorboards, uh, just kind of, if you're hanging a door, just popping it under there and it gives you a little bit of leverage. Just loads of things that you can use this for. So that is another great one and one of our favorites. Okay, back to power tools again. Uh, now this one, depend, it depends on the house you're renovating. If you're just doing a flat, you might not need it. But if you've got any amount of masonry, you're kind of doing any extensions, you're doing much demolition work or you're fixing down as concrete floors, an SDS drill or an SDS plus drill is a really good investment. Hiring one of these is probably not worth it uh, in that I think this sort of store-bought sort of cheapish brand one was maybe £60 and I've, uh, I mean, I've absolutely thrashed it um, and I would have spent five times over that if I'd been hiring it all the time. It's just a really inexpensive tool but one where you get so much power for your bang for your buck really. So this is super helpful if you're doing any amount of drilling and you'll notice the difference between the hammer drill function on a normal drill driver and this within seconds because it really does take seconds if you're just drilling in six mil eight mil holes into concrete to fix a stud you know stud to the wall or something like that or drilling down into concrete this is just going to speed up time now i can't quite remember what size this one when it is i think it's a three kilo or 2.5 kilo or something but it's plenty of power and you can use all sorts of bits in it which are great for demolition whether it's just flipping loads of tiles off a bathroom wall you can use a wide bolster type bit on there to chisel everything off or you can use like a pointed breaker if you're just taking down a garden wall it just really gets in there and just has that hammer action without turning so another multi-purpose tool and another one that we couldn't be without especially in a stone or brick property okay next up tape measures you can't really manage without one um, and you're better off investing and when you do buy them buy them in pairs because it's the one thing that we tend to lose lots of there's probably half a dozen or more around the house and i could only find one and a smaller one to show you today but the, the better built ones the stanley or the fat max or, or whatever are going to last you longer but also the, the the length is is important because there's no point trying to measure half a room try and put something on the floor and then start it's just inaccurate and you'll regret it so eight meters is fine for most things around the house but definitely buy them in pairs or more because you just don't want it, the amount of time you spend looking for stuff uh, can't be recovered so get a couple of those okay next up is the multi-tool you can get cordless ones of these uh, i've got the corded one and it's absolutely fine for what i need this comes into its own less for the sanding side, although that's what I've been using it for this week. Just kind of really detailed sanding, but for the cutter. And that's usually what you'd have on one of these. And it basically is the ideal tool for cutting out little sections of plasterboard if you're fitting a socket or if you're trying to just remove a section of floorboard. And if you imagine going through with a circular saw, you've got to be, risk, you know, you've got to be careful how deep you set your blade, but also because of the shape of the blade, you're always going to overrun into the next plank, uh, the next kind of board. So if you're going to have exposed floorboards, it looks, you know, like you've made a bit of a mess. If you go for one of these, then you can just run that really thin kerf blade. It's less than a millimetre, I think. And you can just kind of lift out that board, work where you need to, um, just make nice tidy cuts. So that's a really handy one. All right, let's try and get back on pace. Right, levels is the next one. Um, you don't want to build or renovate a wonky house and if you've got a short level like this it might be great for hanging pictures but actually if you're doing any amount of you know putting up a stud wall or just checking your know, countertop worktops or anything like that you want something that's a little bit longer this came in a set they're very inexpensive ones uh, but they seem pr pretty accurate and they're definitely nice and straight even just to use the straight edge the handy so this one came i think this is six foot uh, there was a four foot, a three foot, and also a little kind of torpedo level, I think they're called, with the magnets on. That's also a really handy one. I use that a lot. Um, but just get a decent couple of levels or even a set like this, and that will stand you in good stead and make sure that everything is nice and straight. Okay, next up, this one could have kind of come in with the safety gear at the top. Get yourself one of these. I think they're about eight pounds or something like that. It's a voltage detector 
and if you're doing any work with electrics you obviously want to check that you're working safely this one doesn't even have a battery in at the moment but it's a it's a light and also a audible sort of beeping you don't have to put it anywhere near wires or anything you can just hover it over a cable you can pop it by the socket and it will immediately t immediately tell you if it's live don't use it as your only method of checking and you know turn everything off before you mess around but it is a really helpful way if you're just trying to work out what circuits are doing what in your house when you start your renovation uh, one of these is, is, uh, is a must okay number 10 is the shop vac it's stuck over in the corner it's covered in dust i won't bring it up here but it has been invaluable as far as keeping the place tidy ish whether it's kind of old plaster or plasterboard dust bits of rubble on the floor even and all sorts of man glitter from your woodworking tools it's just gonna eat it all up there it's just an empty bucket one that i've got you can get bags for them if it's really fine dust and it's just definitely it's going to save your house vacuum as well which keeps everyone happy so uh, uh, yeah decent and they start i think about 50 pounds for a wet dry vacuum and it will be worth its weight in gold trust me okay now i've got a few bonus ones i'm just going to rattle through because they're kind of things i thought of when i was coming up with the list okay number one for the bonus is just a knife whether it's a stanley knife craft knife uh, or a multi-tool like this something that package arrives you can't get into it you use your car keys you break your car key. it's just just always have a knife on you also if you're just doing any sort of chiseling or or cutting accurate cutting just cut through first with your knife you can get much ac more accurate cuts uh next up stapler we use a stapler quite a lot because we were living in the house as we did the renovation so to be able to just staple up some plastic over a doorway with a uh, staple gun was perfect for the job uh, next up it kind of came in with our lifting bar when it comes to demolition tools there are crowbars and wrecking bars and lifting bars but a little one like this is perfect for just prying out any little bits of trim or uh, it might be that just kind of popping out a few nails but something like this or the next size up quite often these come in a set these rough neck ones are great so i'll pop a link to those below as well duct tape everyone needs duct tape it might just be patching some dust sheet or stitching some plastic together to save your floor but have some duct tape on hand dust sheets as well good to have pencils you are going to get through a lot of pencils you're going to lose a lot of pencils buy yourself a pack of 20 or 50 or something when you start out they'll all be gone by the time you finish but have plenty of pencils around next up clamps uh, just, you can never have enough clamps when it comes to woodwork but if you're doing renovations then also clamps come in hand in handy if you are working on your own a lot or just working the two of you and you're struggling for that extra set of hands then a, a clamp can really help you know it might just be holding up one end of a timber whilst you check the other end or if you're leveling something up you can clamp it put your level on it and check it so just have some clamps around and last but not least it has to be your phone when you have finished doing some work or before you start it just pan around the room filming it's all right for me because i'm filming everything but just pan around the room filming it could be a five second clip but it means that when you come to hang those pictures two years down the line you know what's behind the plaster or if you're just kind of trying to remember where you ran the pipes so that when the radiator stopped working or you've got a leak you know roughly where to start chopping into the floorboards but just film it because even if you don't need it you'll be able to look back and reminisce and feel warm and fuzzy when you know what you managed to achieve but film stuff you can look back you can freeze it have a look that's where that tool is it's stuck in that stud wall or something like that and there's also a lot of apps around you can check for kind of roof angles or i've got a digital spirit level app which is also quite handy so there you go that's our top 10 that we managed to come up with and i know there are loads to add to that uh, but it'd be interesting if anyone's got their own little list of top 10 you can list them below and just see what other things people come up with you will need more than this you can't get away with just this but i thought it was a good start to uh, to kick you off if you're starting a renovation as i was doing this i was thinking maybe we go into a little bit more detail into the different aspects of tools like a back to basics and that will be preaching to the choir for some of you but also it might be a little bit helpful uh, for those of you who want to 
think about you know what tools do I need and what really don't I need because there's no point in just having endless tools if you're not going to use them so the next few videos I'm going to put together are going to be the back to basics DIY tools and we'll just look at all the different categories and then we better get making something. So there's a list in the description for majority of the tools that I've mentioned if you want to go through and find them for yourself. But apart from that, remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.